Ariel Helwani in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, sitting alongside the reigning, defending UFC strawweight champion, Rose Namunas, who, of course, defends her title on Saturday night against Ioanni on Jacek in Brooklyn, New York. Rose, it's good to see you again. We just wrapped up the press conference, and I love watching you during these press conferences because you are expressionless. You don't look at anyone. You're just kind of looking ahead. Could you tell us what are you thinking? Because this was a pretty hostile crowd. What is actually going through your mind during all of that? Um, yeah, it's difficult to really speak your mind uh, um, in that type of hall. One, because it's just so tiny and you can't hear nothing. But two, it's like everybody's just screaming anyway. So it's like they're not going to listen to what I'm saying anyways. It, it don't. It goes over their heads. <laughs> do you not even enjoy that? Like, would you rather not do that? No, it's cool. I, I definitely, um, as soon as I sat down, I just have, was filled with a whole bunch of tingles and energy. So it was, it was a cool feeling. Is there a different feeling as you know, champion as opposed to challenger. You've done a bunch of these as challenger, first time as champion. Does it feel any different now? Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, this is a uncharted territory for me. So I've never been a champ before up until now. So um, everything's new at the same time, very similar. You know, uh, I didn't, you know, I made it an effort to, to not let the belt really change what's important. Do you feel like you accomplished that? I believe so, yeah. yeah. I heard your coach, Trevor Whitman, say that, you know, you guys don't treat this as a defense. This is like you're fighting for the belt. You're trying to win the belt again. Obviously, that makes a lot of sense, and we would understand why. But is, is that easier said than done? Is, is, it, is it hard to put yourself back in the shoes of the person who's going for the belt when you see the belt every day and it's around you, you're holding it? Um, what I think makes it even easier is uh, making it not about the belt, you know, making it so that uh, I, I know my purpose for fighting and uh, is to change the world. But, you know, if... Uh, if I'm not meant to be the champion, then I'm not. But I, I believe I am, and I, I believe I'm the better fighter. And uh, we'll just have to let God uh, decide what was going to happen. You know, one of the storylines going into the first fight was her really trying to sort of get into your, you know, your, your psyche. She even, you know, said that she thought that you were mentally weak, all that stuff. It doesn't seem like she's done that this time around. She doesn't try to get under your skin or play those mind games. Have you noticed that? And do you have a reason as to why that might be? Um, I mean, there's really nothing to say, you know, so... Uh, I think uh, we're, we're going to see, I think she's focused on herself and tried to uh, fix the mistakes maybe that she's made in her preparation. And um, I think we're going to, I'm, I'm expecting, you know, the best version of herself and I'm really looking forward to the, to the challenge. In other words, do you think you may have humbled Joanna and Jacek? Um, I don't know. I, I think so. I feel like after a performance like that, you've got to be humble, you know, like that's, uh, you can't get knocked out and, and, uh, you know, not change something, right. you know? Yeah. It's always interesting to watch a champion after they get knocked out, lose the belt and see how they return. Oftentimes fighters turn into different fighters as a result. You know, even GSP turned into a different fighter after he was knocked out by Matt Serra. Are you expecting a different Yuan Ian check on Saturday? I'm expecting, uh, I'm expecting for me to, to uh, be in control of myself and whatever shows up, shows up, you know? Mm -hmm. Did yeah. you even spend a lot of time watching that first fight? I know it's pretty short. But, for example, how many times did you watch it in the build-up to this fight? Uh, for the build-up to this fight, I tried to, you know, I tried not to, I tried to lead that in the past, but also, you know, uh, as a reminder that, that uh, what happened that night was uh, meant to be. And uh, just, just kind of, uh, I replayed it a few times, but mainly right after the fight, you know. Like, that's always, that's always after victory. We, we watch it over and over and over again. Even the losses, too, you know. But, uh yeah, um, for this fight, you know, I just focus on getting better and, and uh, just improving little little details here and there. I must say, I watched the clip of you and Pat in your backyard hitting those tennis balls <laughs> like 20 times. I think people don't realize how difficult that is, especially with yeah. both hands. How long did it take for you to perfect that? That's unbelievable. Yeah, that was, uh, I think we did that about maybe like a like 10 or 20 times total, you know, like 100 balls. And uh, that's just something that, you know, if we're just outside and... Um, you know, after practice, if we're just like sitting around, we like to we like to sit around a lot in our backyard after we're done with the day. And um, that's kind of how we would like pass the time. We also got like some little double M ball, I guess, not a bag, but, uh, you know, attached to the tree outside and just like little things just to keep your mind busy. But, you know, but not like overly exerting yourself after you've already worked out. Does your dog pick up all the balls for you? Because I was thinking, <laughs> you know like, how what? big of a pain in the butt it would be to get them all. It is a big pain in the butt, but, uh, um, so, like, I'll practice, like, shooting them back in the box and stuff okay. like that just for fun. But yeah. uh, I'll pick them all up, and then at the last one, I'm trying to teach my, my dog to, to drop it in the box. And she'll do it only after, like, 
10 times and be like, in the box, in the box, in the box. <laughs> and then she'll eventually do it. By the way, where is Mishka? Usually she's at these things with you. Um, I try and leave her like only, only when it's time to unwind and I leave her in a room or like, okay. you know, if we have any free time uh, aside from this interview, you know, we'll, we'll go take her for a walk or something, but this is business. You know what I mean? Like she, she needs to stay back. But in she is room. in New York. Yes. Okay. Yeah. She's here. So she's in the room and like, yeah, for the, like, I'm not gonna bring her to the arena or anything. Plus that's not a, I don't want to stress her out too much. You know, she's there for me to, uh, to, to comfort me in the times of, you know, just, just being around the loved ones, uh, you know, in times where it's not totally business. Just a couple more things. Are you at all concerned that she won't make weight for this fight? No, I don't think so. Uh, I think she, I think she's gonna make weight. Okay, yeah. no problem. You, you don't think that that will be used as? I don't know. I mean, that that could be anything could happen. You know, like you know, Tony tripped and fell. Right. <laughs> so there's uh that you can't predict the future, but I, I believe that she'll make weight. By the way, as a champion, what do you think about Max Holloway doing this on six days' notice? That's that's really cool. I think. Uh, I think that's going to be a really good fight. I think, um, yeah, I mean, there's nothing really to lose for Max, you know. Yeah. I think it's, why not, you know, just take a short, I love short notice fights, you know, but at the same time, it, you have to be in the right state of mind in the right place in your life, and uh, he seems like he's in a good place for that. Are you really looking forward to April 8th when you don't have to think about this person for a very long time and answer questions about her? <laughs> yeah, rematches are, are difficult. You know, I went through that with teaching and yeah. stuff. And, you know, it's, uh, but at the same time, it's, it's just another fight, and um, I'm looking forward to summer vacation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, last thing, you, you said that you know being champion for you is is a way to change the world. I know it's been a very short amount of time since November, mm -hmm. but how in any way have you been able to change the world in your mind as a result of being champion? Um, I think I think people are being a little more, at least from my perspective. You know, I, I don't really have no like documented proof of like actually change in the world, but. I get people come up to me all the time that, that, you know, they feel like so refreshed with just the way that I've performed. And then I think that people are being a little more honest with how they're acting. Um, I, you know, other fighters, like, I think it, there's a, there's a different, a breath of fresh air, I think in the MMA community or just something different, you know, it does, doesn't mean like, just be who you are. Like if you're an asshole, be an asshole, but if you're nice, be nice. And, uh, Prefer that you wouldn't be an asshole, yeah. <laughs> but you know guys like Brian Ortega who who you know they got he got his foundation out there yeah, and yeah. you know just trying to do something good. Um, but at the same time, it's just it's just whatever you want to do, and I think that's what I'm, I see the most. And there's a lot more work to be done, and um, so I'm I'm looking forward to that as well. Thank you, Rose. Good luck on Saturday. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks so much. Yeah. Appreciate